Chris John Geeve joins me now. Thank you so much for joining us. The U.S. debt, it's interesting. We have a guest on one day they're pessimistic, the other they're optimistic. Even if we do get a debt ceiling agreement, are they going to be downgraded? And what would be the consequences of a downgrade on America? Well, I think the U.S. faces a long-term problem, and I think it's quite likely they will be downgraded anyway. Uh, I think the rating agencies have said that if they don't come up with a long-term plan and the longer this goes on the less likely it seems to me is that they will come up with a long-term plan so I think they'll probably fudge something together before they stop paying their salaries and debts but I think it's quite likely we'll see a downgrade in the next couple of months we yeah. you know the problem is that the markets for the moment haven't really absorbed any kind of realization that that's a possibility are you concerned that once we hear news that they have been downgraded the markets will simply collapse well you've got to ask where's the market going to go um, US Treasuries are absolute linchpin of practically every mm -hmm. investment portfolio mm -hmm. and I don't see that changing just because they get a precautionary mm -hmm. downgrade that will be a signal from the rating agencies they need a long-term plan to address their fundamental issues what uh, is spooking the markets at the moment is are they going to default next month <laughs> yeah. and um, at the moment they they're, they're risking that but uh, I'm I'm hopeful that they'll see sense before they get to that and in terms of what we can do, of course, because of all this, again, will this downgrade or the fact that we won't reach debt ceiling, and if the markets are, scoop, are, are spooked, will it hurt growth so much that we're going to see a double dip recession across the world? I, I don't, I'm not expecting a double dip recession. If they default, and in a disorderly way, in this August, because they can't reach agreement, that really is going to blow, blow the world economy sideways. And then I think we are looking at a big event which could cause another recession. If they reach a temporary deal which has to be revisited next year before the election, but they, they, someone blinks enough mm -hmm. to, 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 to keep paying their debt, keep paying their interest, I don't think we need to see a, a double dip. I find it, I mean, how can they really not reach an agreement, even if it's just for those 12 months? You know, China's starting to make noise, they're not happy, they own so many treasuries. They must cobble something together. Do you really believe that they, they won't find an agreement the next no, 10 well, days? No, I'm, well, I'm, 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 I'm expecting them to, okay. to do a deal. But the a trouble about this sort of brinkmanship is, as we saw around Lehman's, after all, the Treasury wanted to save Lehman's. Yeah. But if you leave it to the last minute, then something can go wrong, something practical goes wrong and you run out of time. Mm -hmm. That's the risk they're running. Of course, I'm sure both sides fully expect to do some sort of deal, but they're running it f very fine. Yeah, leaving it to the last minute, something that we know very well here in Europe. What about the European debt crisis? Because, of course, we still have no real resolution in sight. Is, is there a big chance that Greece will default and that at the end of the day, in two, even you know, a year, the euro will have to break up? Look, the fund looking long term, Europe's in a better position than America. The euro area is fully capable of paying all its debts. But does it want to? Does it want to underwrite the Greeks and, and, and all, all the uh, heavily indebted countries? It hasn't really answered that question. It did a bit more than it needed to, and so it's got through the summer, I reckon. But we'll come back to this in the autumn. And the question is, if necessary, would they put collective credit at stake to support Spain and Italy. If Europe said they would, convincingly, then actually Greece is a small problem. Yeah, but the problem is that they, they often leave it until the last minute. So oh, when yeah. these yields are at, at you know, six and a half, seven percent, so again, is there a danger that Italy will have to ask for a bailout because yields are nearing six percent, which was unthinkable just two months ago? Yeah, no, absolutely, that's the danger. And I think that's what they're going to have to confront in the autumn. They've got through the summer. They've, they've de postponed having to settle the Greek default for another couple of years. But if interest rates stay at 6 plus for Spain and Italy, their debt arithmetic looks dreadful. And uh, that is going to be the problem of this autumn. Mm -hmm. In the end, I think the Eurozone will pull together. Mm -hmm. They will underwrite the Italian and Spanish debt. And once they've made that clear, the European sovereign debt problem is over. Mm -hmm. Of course, the American problem remains. It remains. In terms of what the ECB is doing, do you think they're, they're jumping gun a little bit too quickly? Then actually by raising rates, even if it's gradually, will hurt and really put a lot of these periphery countries in jeopardy? 
I think they're moving pretty slowly, and I don't think, you know, what matters to Spain is the premium they pay because people are doubtful about sp their, their debts. It's not the base rate. So um, if you look at the German economy and look at how quickly German unemployment is going down, you've got to say there's a case for raising rates in Europe. If you were setting rates for Germany, they'd be about 3.5%, not 1, 1.25%. Mm -hmm. So um, I, th I don't think this is the key of the problem for the periphery. The key problem for the periphery is the level of debt and the level of interest mm -hmm. rates they have to pay on it. All right. John Gieve, thank you so much for joining us today.